The new Jane Austen is like, quite a find, I think. Good afternoon, Frederica. Good afternoon, Mother. So it was really exciting to not just be in a Jane Austen, but also one that hadn't been done before, because I knew all the others so well. I think that it's quite different from the Austens. It feels like a fielding. It feels like Tom Jones or Joseph Andrews. It feels quite picaresque. It moves really fast. <laughs> Lady Citizen, I really hate calling it that because it's not a title that she thought of. As she went on in her career, she looked to nouns. I love her titles, so I love Sense and Sensibility, Persuasion, Pride and Prejudice. So for me, that it be called Love and Friendship was important, and I think it's helped it change its nature. It's not just about one character. It's about a whole world and quite a few relationships. Congratulations on being about to receive the most accomplished flirt in all England. Reginald de Courcy seems to be motivated by curiosity, and that gets him into all sorts of trouble. I understand Lady Susan possesses a degree of captivating deceit, which might be pleasing to detect. Good evening. What charming expressions. The character of Lady Susan is just so brilliant. She's so interesting and so flawed and so multi-layered. The thing about Lady Susan is that, unusually for romantic literature, is that she's sort of at core not really a very good person, and yet she's kind of celebrated. You think she's a genius? Diabolically so. Like the serpent in Eden's garden. And sometimes I think you need people to make things happen, even if their motives are horribly bad and, and openly bad. And I love people who are charming and can convince others of anything. There's a certain pleasure in making a person predetermined to dislike instead acknowledge one's superiority. How delightful it will be to humble the pride of these pompous de Courcy's. They cook up various plots to try and detach young Reginald from the clutches of the wicked Lady Susan. I moved behind the scenes uh, with his mother to try and head off this catastrophe. Uh, I must go. No, I'll write. Oh, no, no, this is happening. Uh, there's no time. When it comes to flattery, don't hold back. Men are such gluttons for praise. It's never enough. Alicia is Lady Susan's best friend and confidant. I think maybe her only real friend. In the novel, the Alicia Johnson character wasn't fully described, and making her this American Tory exile kind of a shocking character, it really seemed to go with what Chloe would do, and it added a dimension to the story. By what means forbids? He threatens the severest punishment imaginable, sending me back to Connecticut. His wife, Alicia, he keeps on a string of threats and <laughs> I think, poor thing. I'm sorry to say, my dear, that I hear the Atlantic Passage is very cold at this time of year. <laughs> <laughs> I think what Whit likes in what I did is that I tend to play, I tend to play slightly sort of useless bumbling men and my character in this is a useful, bumbling man, so maybe that's a step up in my career. Dearest, I believe you have pressing business in London. Oh, um, yes. Justin is hilarious and very tall, so it's very fun to dance with him because he can really swing you around. With the casting of an actor named Tom Bennett for the part of Sir James Martin, he kind of created this character that practically didn't exist on the page. I kept getting ideas for Sir James Martin, so all these Sir James Martin scenes kept coming into the script. How do you do? How do you do? A kind of you should ask. Uh, excellent. Truly, very well. Thank you. Because Whit wrote the screenplay, I think he knows exactly what he wants and I think he's heard the words in his head and so when he achieves that with the actor, that's when he's happy. You being sort of synthetic if you're a little more intimidated and fearful? Yes. I really just have so much admiration for him and I like being around him and I like when he's happy and you can sense that he's pleased with what he's getting in the day and when he's frustrated, I feel that really deeply <laughs> and he's gonna think that I'm horribly sentimental. And <laughs> but I do and um, so I'm really like, I'm always rooting for him. Okay, excellent. His characters in his other films talk about Austin a lot, 
and, and argue about Austin. So Austin is obviously, there's, there's, a, there's a direct line through, I think. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Susan, stop. Hello. Yes. Hello. Welcome, ladies, Susan. Love and friendship is almost more understandable as in Jane Austen, Oscar Wilde piece. It, it's what we think of as Oscar Wilde. But Jane Austen wrote it many years before Oscar Wilde. I think that Lady Susan has a great deal in common with what used to be called, without embarrassment, the comedy of manners. And it's worth remembering that the Latin for manners is mores. We get our word morals from it. So comedies of manners are comedies of morals. They're not just light drawing room society comedies. These things make, of course, magnificent entertainments as films. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Kate Beckinsale. Thank you. Thank you, Samuel. And Mr. Still Whitman. That's a wrap. Thank you.